Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench and I've had a busy couple of weeks. I haven't even had time to shave my neck beard. So we're just going to take a quick look at how I built one of the elements of the intro. So let's check it out. All right, guys, this is what we're going to be making this week. It's actually quite simple. It's two shapes. Well, two shapes and a bunch of layers. So let's take a look. All right, so let's bring this over here. So you can see we have our W logo in the center. So the base for this technique is this stroked path with an offset paths on it. So the only reason we even have two shapes is because once this gets far enough along, this will fill in on itself. So I made the second shape, which just cuts out the center and continues the W up to the middle. So we click on one of these. You can see that's what that looks like modified. And the full W is actually only the first two shapes, this one and that. So let's solo that real quick. So that's the first one and this is the next one. So all of the layers after that are just this. So all we're doing is taking the stroke width, subtracting about one and offsetting each one by that amount. And if you want to do that slightly differently, you can check out our tutorial number 59, shape expressions, because there's certain things you can do that all in one layer. I wanted to shift the timing of all of these things. So this is actually the best way to do it, but you might be able to combine the two and make something cool and unique. But for this, I don't have a lot of things repeated. So I just did it by hand. So I built the first layer. I added my offset paths to it and I set up a trim paths for it. I duplicated that a bunch of times and then I selected all of my duplicates and I went up in here into the search bar and I typed in amount. That's going to take me to the offset paths amount control. I believe these are all 57 apart so that they overlap by one pixel so I didn't get any weird gaps. So for each one of these, I just add 57 pixels to the previous amount on up the chain. You could also tie that to an index expression if you want. Then once that was set up, I used my randomizer script to actually randomize the endpoints of all of these layers. You can just drag them out by hand if you want to. Then I went back in and I tweaked the order of some of these. And after that, I selected all my layers again, and I typed up here offset. So this brings in the offset for the trim paths. So then I just randomly moved each one of these until I got something I liked. So if we play it, it looks like this. So that's basically the mat is built. So then back in the main comp, I have three copies of this. I offset each copy by a few frames, and then I change the colors of each one. So this is actually the bottom one. This is the second one, and this is the top one. The trim paths all have an easing, so they all grow nicely from zero, which you can see if we go through really slowly. So even though it's pretty simple and easy to set up, it makes a nice reveal. You can use this offset technique to build other things too, like this right here. So this is actually built out of a polygon I made in Illustrator really quickly because I wanted to match this angle perfectly. It's an odd angle that I can't really snap anything to in After Effects. So this actually extends way past the comp. And that's because unlike the other example, we're not offsetting outward, but inward, which means as we offset inward more, the sides come in as well. So in order for these to stay lines and not become just full solid shapes on the inside, we have to have our paths extend way past the comp. Keep in mind that the only way this offset paths works like this is that the shape is closed. If we only had the line that goes from here and then over to here, when we offset our paths, it would actually expand on both sides and make a closed in shape. So that might be a desirable thing you're looking for, but I only wanted the single line. After that, I just parented this to my triangle and animated the timing until it showed up right. And that's what it looks like when we're done. Obviously, this is pretty simple, but you can use it to make a lot of cool stuff. So I hope you guys go out and experiment with a look. All right, guys, that was a quick one. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you want to help support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great content. I am Joe from Workbench, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.